A ver, a ti, que nunca casi te miro a ti. Te voy a preguntar a ti. <laughs> How are you feeling tonight? Blessed to be here uh, with Kelly and Sister Yvonne. Um, the Lord was calling me to come. You know, we come from the valley, and we've both been carrying stress from work, so I, I'm ready to let that go here tonight. Amen. Amen, amen. My boy, Ralph, I haven't seen you in a minute, man. Glad to have you back out here. How you feeling, man? How you feeling? Uh, too blessed to be stressed. There's a lot going on in my head, but uh, I'm choosing to have peace inside. Amen, amen. Peace always rules, my boy. A ver, tú también, Mr. Danny. I haven't seen you in a minute, man. How you doing? Bless, bless. I just left it to God's prayers, and then God just let everything happen. Like, I was going through stress, but I said, like, you know what? Dios no orca. El aprieta, pero no orca. He holds you, but doesn't choke you, you know? Amen, amen. So I'm blessed. Amen. Everybody's feeling blessed. Man, we're going to use that hashtag tonight. So if you, da if you guys take a video tonight, take a little clip, take a picture with anybody, hashtag so LA, hashtag too blessed to be stressed. Amen? So before we continue, um, I would like to go ahead and pass the little joy box. And I would like to start the collection today for the ministry um, because, you know, nothing moves. Okay. The ministry is, is in need and it's in motion to upgrading a lot of stuff. As you can see, now our sound sounds way better thanks to, thanks to all the collections that people have been donating. Thank you for your generous, uh, generous um, offerings and, and contributes. Thanks to those things, you know, they all add up. And once we get to these numbers, we can buy better systems. Uh, when it comes to retreat, we have money to, you know, use that money for the good. It's not like we're spending the money for us individually. It honestly, it's an investment for you guys and for the people that are to come. So thank you guys for putting that little, that little grain and thank you for contributing. So before anything, we would like to start the night with prayer. And we're going to go ahead and start the night with a Divine Mercy chaplet. But before we go ahead and start that, I would like to ask you guys if you guys would like to put in a petition. Right now would be the perfect time. Would anybody like to offer this for any anything that you might, um, might have in your heart, may the Holy Spirit has put in your heart or it could be a personal petition. Um, it's up to you. Um, go ahead. What's his name? Gilberto. So Lord, right now we put Gilberto in your mighty presence, Lord, so that you, Lord, may move strongly in his life tonight and throughout his whole life until you meet again with him, Lord. We put his family, we put his addictions, we put his problems, we put his future, we put his emotions, we put all... Of him, Lord, in your blessed hands tonight, Lord. So that may you do whatever it is that you need to do and whatever it is that you want to do with his life, Lord. 
May your will be done in his life and in his families. We offer this petition in your name of Jesus Christ. Anybody else would like to add another petition? For my friend Yareli, who's currently at the um, hospital right now, and for myself um, to be more at peace. Amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. We send these petitions your way, Lord. You know what to do with these petitions, Lord. You know what's best for all of us. You know what's best for Mina's family, for her personal life, for her spirit, for herself as a human being, as a sister in Christ. Lord, may your will be done in her and on the petitions that she is trying to offer you this night. I want to pray for all the people who are being attacked by anxiety, mental health, everyone who has that faint voice of God in their heart, but feel like the chains of anxiety are bigger. I want to pray for them so that they feel that God's love for them is bigger and they can become liberated. Amen. Lord. We send this petition your way also, Lord. Because anxiety, depression, Lord, we know it hurts the church. It hurts us as individuals. It hurts our spiritual growth. It hurts us as human beings. And it hurts those around us. So, Lord, may those that suffer through depression, anxiety, loneliness, suffering, any type of spiritual suffering any type of spiritual depression, any type of human depression, whatever it may be, Lord. It's in your hands, Lord. You know who to touch. You know where those people are, Lord. Behind closed doors and, and the ones that are not hiding, Lord. We put them all in your hands, Lord, so that your will may be done in their life too as well. Anybody else would like to add a petition? I would like for us to pray for my father's health. He had a stroke uh, about 10 years ago. He battled cancer, prostate cancer, and he survived. But his health is declining. And for him and any other person that is sick. Lord, we put Yvonne's father in your beloved hands, Lord. You know the importance of a father. You know the importance of a father, Lord. So we put Yvonne's father, Lord, in your presence, Lord, and your mighty presence, Lord. We have faith, Lord, that your will be, may be done in him and in Yvonne and her whole family and all of their petitions that they have as one family and as individuals, Lord. May you bless them greatly, Lord, and give them peace and strength. I would like to pray for everyone that's in this room and those that are on their way and those that couldn't make it. May God continue to strengthen us, to make us humble, to help us forgive each other and help us to stand strong together as a family, no matter what. Amen. I would like to um, pray for Esteban who passed away um, last week. Um, he had cancer. May God um, bring his family peace and may it's, um, Esteban rest in peace. Amen. Lord, may you have mercy, Lord, on Esteban. And may your grace fall upon him, Lord, wherever he is, Lord. Lord, may you bless those that are on their way, Lord. May you bless those that desired to come tonight but couldn't make it for whatever reason may you bless those that are tuning in through social media lord that their petitions are important as the ones that are being claimed here lord may you bless everybody lord anybody else would i want to lift up 
Karina and Cassandra who work with me and my classroom. May the Lord help us to work together as we close the school year and take away that anxiety, stress that has built up in my classroom so that I could be in peace and do share my gift with my students. Amen. Lord, may you bless all her students, Lord. And may you bless all the students, all the little kids, Lord, that, that attend schools, any type of school, any type of learning, Lord, so that it could be better for our future, Lord. May you bless the next generation and the one after that, Lord, that we know the importance, Lord, that our generation, our kids, Lord, the kids that, that are going to open the doors, Lord, to a better future, Lord, that are going to also plant those seeds, Lord. May you bless them, Lord. May you bless them, Lord, so that they can do your will, too, and they can hear your calling. In Jesus' name. So Walter is asking from Facebook for the health of anybody who is battling any problems. Lord, we put all those people, Lord, and we're going to put all the people that might see this later on, Lord, people, Lord, we put those people that later they might see this, this video, this, this, this encounter night, Lord, and they are going to get to this point where these petitions are going to be uplifted to you, Lord. We put those petitions right now, Lord, and we put all of our petitions, Lord, that are in our hearts, in the middle of our silence, Lord. But most of all, Lord, I want to put, I want to offer all of the women, Lord, that are choosing to abort today. I want to put all those people that are working in the favor of abortion, Lord. May you have mercy on those people. May you have mercy on those people, Lord. May you have mercy on those that work for the devil, Lord. May you also call them, Lord, and turn their life around, Lord. May you show them the light, Lord, and you may reveal, Lord, the, the wicked ways, the, the false teachings, whatever it may be, Lord. May you reveal reveal yourself to them, Lord, so that they too can also receive your forgiveness, your love, your peace, your salvation, Lord. Have mercy on all of us. He also asked for the intention that Jose Espinosa is asking for prayers for the city of Long Beach that pro-abortionist activists are planning to protest this Saturday. Amen, Lord. Gris uh, is also asking for anybody who is considering suicide because they don't feel love. And Jose Al, uh, Espinosa is also asking for prayers for the unborn. Amen. Lord, we put all these petitions in your hands, Lord. May you keep all evil away from us, apart from us. We rebuke all evil, Lord, and we only accept you, Lord. We, we, Invite all the things that only come from you and only you, Lord. Everything else, Lord, we don't want it. We don't need it. And we pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's put ourselves in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. St. Faustina, prayer for sinners. O oh Jesus, eternal truth, our life, I call upon you, and I beg your mercy for poor sinners. O oh sweetest heart of my Lord, full of pity and unfathomable mercy, I plead with you for poor sinners. O oh most sacred heart, fount of mercy, from which gush forth rays of inconceivable graces upon the entire human race, I beg of you, light for poor sinners. O oh Jesus, be mindful of your own bitter passion 
and do not permit the lost of souls, redeemed at so dear a price of your most precious blood. O Jesus, when I consider your great price of your blood, I rejoice at its immensely, for one drop alone would have been enough for the salvation of all sinners. Although sin is an abyss of wickedness and ingratitude, the price paid for us can never be equaled. Therefore, let every soul trust in the passion of the Lord and place its hope in His mercy. God will, den God will not deny His mercy to anyone. Heaven and earth may change, but God's mercy will never be exalted. Oh, what immense joy burns in my heart when I contemplate your incomprehensible goodness, O oh Jesus. I desire to bring all sinners to your feet, that they may glorify your mercy throughout endless ages. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, O unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver from the sin of evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, denied, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. 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 Mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I, I offer you the body and blood, and blood soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole soul. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his soul for passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexaltable, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Let's give our Lord a round of applause tonight. Because best believe that through this prayer, a lot of people's lives have been blessed. We might be doing the prayer right here, but someone across the world is being touched right now by the Holy Spirit that God has sent. So as we continue our night, we're going to go ahead and transition into some praise and worship with my brother Jesse, got my sister Yvonne, I got my sister Deanna right here, also present. So how about we give Jesus another mm -hmm. round of applause? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen, amen. Go ahead, brother. 
Take, Take it away. Sir. Thank you so much, brother. Um, guys, uh, I feel like there's there's different messages we're all going to receive tonight, especially after we hear what the preacher has to say. I'm really excited. Um, but I must say, I feel like God is calling. God called me to humble myself. Um, usually I'm up here with uh, the sore choir, which is, consists of Rosa and, and Mighty Cruz, and they couldn't make it today. And I feel like I could have just said, man, I got this, and I could have handled it by myself, but I said, no. Let me humble myself. Let me reach out for help. And so praise God for my sisters here that were able to come. And I feel like God wants me to tell you that too. Let's humble ourselves. Let's unite. Let's stay together. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand up. I want you guys to repeat after me right here. Clap. 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 There you go. This song is called Sing, Sing. Sing, Sing, Sing. I make music with the heavens. Sing, sing. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. Sing, 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 grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. In your name, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth above you. Kings and kingdoms bow down. Son of God, you are the one. You are the one we're living for. You are the love that frees us. You are the light that leads us. Like a fire burning, Son of God, you are the one, you are the one, we live for. Oh, sing, 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 and make music with the heavens, sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. I your name, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. One more time. Oh Jesus. All right, all right. There's so much going on in our world today, you guys. Whether you're on the left or the right, the Democratic, Republican, it doesn't matter. Right now, there's a battle out in the streets, a battle for life. And we must choose our faith. God is calling us to stand up, to rise together, right? To come out of our homes together. And so during this next song, I'm going to challenge you guys right now to look at each other in the face, to say hi, to acknowledge each other, not just to look down. It's okay, bro. Let's look at each other on this song that's called, Lord, I love you. Let us face each other. When we say, brother, I love you, face a brother. When you say, sister, I love you, face a sister. Acknowledge each other with your eyes. Give a beautiful compliment to your brother, to your sister. Let them know that you're loved and you shouldn't be fearful. For we must rise together, my brothers and sisters, and stand up for life. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Can I get an amen? I didn't hear that one. That's right, baby. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, you're going to have to follow my sister right here with the claps. Clap, 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 clap. Follow my sister Diana right here. Baby, 
I praise you with my lips. You touch my soul and help me to let go. Oh, how can I show you that I care, that I do anything for you? Maybe if, maybe if I praise you with my lips and touch my soul and help me to let go. Oh, oh, oh. everybody. Cause Lord, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you Every day a little more And more And more Cause Lord, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you Every day a little more And more Cause Mary, we love you Cause Mary, we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you Every day a little more And more Cause Jesus, we love you Cause Jesus, we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Every day a little more And more Cause brother, we love you Cause brother, we love you, love you, love you, love you Love you every day a little more and more. Cause sisters, we love you. Sisters, we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you every day a little more. And those on social media, we love you too. Cause we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you every day a little more. And more, we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, Lord. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Let me hear it, Daniel. High. Let me hear you, Senya. Ha, let me hear it, Raphael. Ha, let me hear it, Brenda. Ha, all together, one family ready. One more time. We lift your name on high. Praise God. All right, you guys. I'm gonna ask you guys to take a seat right now as we reflect on this last song and prepare ourselves to listen to this talk. Uh, this song is called How Great Is Our God. And once again, you, you guys, you know, during these times, during these rough times, it's important to lean on our faith. It's important to lean on each other. It's important to forgive, to move on, to love, and to have patience, to be humble. And so let us reflect on how great our God is to have gotten each and every one of us here. Some people couldn't make it. Some people had obstacles in their way, but you made it. And you're here right now, and God has a message for you. Now, although you may be having a hard day, maybe you're going through something difficult, maybe you heard something or you felt something you don't like, God is calling you to remember how great he is, Amen. how bigger he is than our problems, how bigger he is than, than our visions. He has a plan for you. Let us reflect on that plan. Amen, amen. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. How 
great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands. Age to age he stands. And time is in his hand. And time is in his hand. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The God had three in one father spirit and son father spirit and son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all sing how great, how great is our God. All together, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great. Is our God and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. Our God, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God, and always see how great, how great is our God. Is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Your own will see how great, how great is our God. I want to take this moment right now. To remind you of how great our God is. See, our God is the only God, the one and only true God. See, there is no other God that died and resurrected on the third day, there is no other God that left the tomb. There is no other God that is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing, only Jesus Christ. That's how God is great. That's how great our God is. You have depression, well guess how great our God is. Our God is so great that He will exchange His peace his love his mercy for that depression that you have that anxiety that problem those hills that you cannot overcome guess what god is so great that he gives you that strength and he says child of mine 
fear no longer that I am here. I am your Lord, your Savior. And no one can take you away from me. That's how God great is. That's how great God is. God is so great that he chose you to be here tonight. He chose you to get closer to him tonight. See, I don't think you understand. The world is moving pretty fast right now. People are speeding. People are drinking. People are dying. People are overdosing. People are killing themselves. People are doing infinite other things. But instead of you doing worldly things, God has you right here in the presence of him. That's how God is. That's how great our God is. That he gave his life for you. That he gave his life for me. So that one day when we die, we get to meet him. We get to meet our creator. We get to transform into that angelic body, spirit. God is so great that he is preparing a kingdom. Matter of fact, he's already prepared. God is so great that he doesn't lie. God is so great that all his promises are fulfilled. And God is so great that if you tonight pray in faith, you will be a changed woman. You will be a changed man. God is so great. He deserves all the praise. So I invite you right now as we continue to sing and praise and worship him. Man, sing with your heart because today is not a sad day. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. To, to change your life, to change your spiritual life, to, to walk into a miracle. You are a walking miracle. That's how great God is. There is no other greater God than our God. There is no other name as powerful as the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. How great so sing with me. Sing with my brothers and my sisters. Sing it. Don't get tired. Don't be ashamed. Who cares if you don't got the best voice? To God, you have the greatest voice. And that's all that matters. Break those barriers. Because God would do it for you. If God put it all in the line for you, you need to put it all in the line for him. How great is he? How great is our God? Let him know with your voice. How great, how great is our God? The whole world is sing, the whole world is sing. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. We're going to give the chance for the people of God to sing by themselves, ready? Come on, come on, let's do it a little louder. Daniela, we would like to invite you to the front so that we can pray for you. Lord, as Daniela walks up to the front, Lord, we want to give you praise and worship for her life, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for her life. Thank you, Lord, for, for rescuing our sister. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in her life, Lord, in her, in her human life, in her spiritual life. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have called her to be, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to bless her, Lord. 
Bless her, Lord. Bless her with that powerful testimony that she's about to give us, Lord. May her testimony, Lord, uplift your name, Lord. May uplift your people that, are, that need to hear this testimony, Lord. May you touch those, Lord, that need to be touched, Lord, through her testimony, Lord. May you work miracles. May you work wonders, Lord, through your, through your daughter's testimony, Lord. May you bless her right now, Lord. Bless her, Lord, and give her the strength, Lord, that she may share her testimony, Lord, with love, with passion, with authority, Lord, with respect, Lord, but with courage, Lord. May she not be afraid, Lord, to speak her testimony, Lord, because you have lifted her, have gave her strength, have gave her a new start, Lord, so Give her the strength right now, Lord. May you give her the peace, Lord, that she seeks within her heart, with, that she seeks within her spirit, Lord, right now. Test her, Lord. Make her a new creation, Lord. May her, give her, make her a new creation, Lord. May you bless her. Let bless her, bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. And not only bless her, Lord, but bless my brothers. Bless my sisters. Bless those on social media. Lord, bless their families, Lord. Bless everybody's testimony here, Lord. May when the time is right, Lord, when we share our testimonies, Lord, may it move mountains, Lord, may it uplift those that are feeling dead, that are feeling weak, Lord. May you give us the strength, Lord. May you give us the courage, Lord, to never be ashamed of our testimony, Lord. May we be ashamed of the sins that we commit on a daily basis, the sins that we used to, we used to do back then. May we be ashamed of that instead, Lord, instead of of the, of the good things, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord. We, we put Daniela in your mighty presence, in the mighty presence, Lord, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, through the intercession of our Mother Mary, the angels, the saints, Lord. May, may the heavens be open tonight. May they, may they, they join us right here, Lord, in this encounter night of testimony, Lord, of praise and worship, of fellowship, Lord. A place, Lord, where we can get closer to you as one family, Lord. As one equal family, Lord. No one's greater than, than others right here, Lord. We're all the same to you, Lord. And as one big family, Lord, we come into your presence right now. And we ask this, Lord, in your mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is good? And all the time? Amen. Let's go ahead and try it again because I didn't get that vibe. <laughs> God is good? And all the time? Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and give God another round of applause. All right. So, um, Wow, I think God's timing is perfect, and we've been saying this for a couple of weeks already, right? Um, giving my testimony wasn't planned, to be honest. Um, I, I want to say we had something else in plan, and then that didn't work, but I think it was because God's timing is perfect, and especially with everything that we're going through right now in society, um, you know, talking about life and um, I'm sure a lot of us were broken inside, right, with, with everything that's going. And um, so that's why I'm saying God is perfect. God's timing is perfect. So before I start, um, I do want to be 100% transparent. And if I cry or I get emotional, please bear with me. Um, you know, as I was preparing my testimony, I've been encountering a lot of that um, so I just want to be transparent that you guys might get a little bit of that, of some crying in here. I'm going to try not to, but we'll see. Right at the end of the day, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit talk and just let's see where this goes. Amen? Amen. So I know most of you know me, but for those who don't know me or for those who are watching in social media, my name is Daniela Rosas. I do go by different names. I go by Dani, Ella, Vere, um, este, Verenice. So you feel free to call me any of those names. I'm okay with that. Um, I look at those names as an act of love from people who call me or my family or friends. So it's all good. 
Um, I was born in Mexico, but raised here in LA. Um, I want to say I was born into a traditional Catholic family. And what do I mean by traditional? Well, both of my parents weren't really, um, I want to say like they would go to to mass, you know, once in a while, like, like the Virgen de Guadalupe Day, or like those main important um, fiestas, right, festivities that the Catholic Church has. But obviously, for they did baptize me as a little girl, but it was because of tradition that, hey, you know, you need to baptize your daughter, et cetera, et cetera, because it was passed on to, through tra uh, traditions. Um, and it was, I would, it was, I think, when I was like five or six years old when I started actually coming more around the church. But from from what I can remember, you know, three, four years old, or I, my family wouldn't really go to church. So it was uh, when when uh, we went to Kinde, and there was like this choir, a group of kids who were playing in the choir, and I told my mom, Mom, I want to do that. You know, I want to be in the choir. And that same Sunday, when I had uh, mentioned that to my mom at the end of Mass, they had made an announcement that any kid who wanted to be in that choir, um, they were going to be accepting people, um, kids, to come. So I think it was kind of like the Holy Spirit calling, right? Like, hey, you know, this is the opportunity. Um, so my, my parents signed me up to that choir. It was actually called... And Sunyantina, which is like a group of students, right? And through that in Sunyantina is when my parents started going, attending more to mass. We started playing at church every Sunday. And then um, it was through that group that we were also invited to different events. Um, you know, we would go to ESNE back in the days, uh, to congresos in, in Guadalupe Radio, who, who you guys I don't know if you guys are familiar with Guadalupe Radio, but if you are, we, I would go there. And then eventually, my choir director started doing um, retreats for kids. So we started like running this retreat. Mind you, I was a kid too, right? So it was like kids giving kids retreats type of thing. Um, but even then, you would think, right? Like, okay, you go into church more often and. Um, your parents are being somewhat involved in the church, that we were, our faith would be there. But actually, our faith wasn't there. We, I think it became a tradition, like a, okay, you know, we're going to take you because you have to go sing, and we're going to go to all these events because you have to go, et cetera, et cetera. But my parents never did anything to get that um, formation, you know, that we need to learn why is it that we do certain things in our church or to read the Bible, to pray as a family. Like we weren't even doing that yet still. But I continue, I wanna say from five to six years old, all the way up to 13, 14 years old, I was doing that. Um, but my faith wasn't there. Um, because of my height and because I do have Believe it or not, I, I growing up, I had a lot of health conditions. Uh, one, I was born premature. So that consisted of me going to uh, doctors often when I was a little girl. Um, I couldn't talk. So praise the Lord, I'm talking to all of you guys. I was um, five years old and I couldn't say one single word. Um, I would communicate with my parents through so uh, sounds, um, signs. Uh, there was, my parents make fun of me because I, I used, like I said, I grew up in Mexico up to the age of four. And um, so I would see my mom giving food to the little, little chickens. And you know how they make this like click sound, like click, click, right? So when I was hungry, I would make that sound. So my mom already knew, you know? Um, so that's why I said for the, you know, praise, praise God, he's so merciful that I'm talking to all of you. Obviously, it was through a lot of me going to uh, speech therapy, but because of that, I couldn't talk. I was bullied, you know. Um, coming to the here to the United States, I didn't know how to speak English. I wanted to interact with people, but I just didn't know how, right? One, I didn't even know how to speak Spanish. Two, <laughs> how am I supposed to speak English? 
So um, I was bullied because of that. I didn't know how to pronounce some words. And up to today, sometimes I struggle, especially when I get nervous. Um, and another, because of my height, right? Um, I'm short. So people were bullying me because of my, because of my height. And then um, also like my weight. So it was just kind of like, I feel like I never belonged to it. Even as a kid, right? I never belonged. So I I'd always isolated myself. Um, I try not having enough friends. I would just stay with my parents most of the time, going to like gatherings or um, my, literally my mom would have to force me, go socialize and I'll be like, no, I'm okay. And, or she would ask some little girl, hey, can you play with my, with my daughter because she needs to, to you know, go play. So I grew up like that. Like I grew up just kind of being by myself. But I, I think as you get older, right? You get older, you start realizing, hey, like I have no friends or, um, even it happened in middle school where I started realizing that the whole time I was just by myself, like in, in lunch or, um, or or little breaks. I can't remember what nutrition, right? That's what you call it, nutrition. It's been a long time. Sorry, like <laughs> nutrition, lunch or recess. I was most of the time by myself reading books. I, I love books, um, but that got me into a depression where I started cutting myself as a little girl. I was um, 12 years old. I started cutting myself, and it felt so good at that time, to be honest, especially when I felt really sad or when people would bully me from coming from, um, from school. Um, you know, I would just cut myself, and it just gave me, like, this high of belonging, you know, like, it was okay. Um, mind you, I was still going to church during all of this, right, and I was doing, like, uh, preaching what people with our choir uh, director would tell us to preach right God is love God is good and you know uh, let's sing and I love it and everything right but in the on the side I was suffering right I was sad like I just felt like I didn't have friends even in the choir with the choir kids I wouldn't really talk to them I wouldn't get along with them but it wasn't because of them but it was more because of me right because I'm like they're gonna bully me they're gonna tell me the same stuff that at school I'm getting so why am I gonna try to be friends with them so I interacted maybe with just one or two people but after that like I wouldn't really really want to um so that was my my middle school years and um Eventually, my mom found out that I was cutting myself, and it was really hard for her. Um, she's like, why are you doing this? Like, you have all the love at home. But I think it's that same love that you receive at home is not the same as, you know, socialized in the, in the, in the world out there, right? So I feel like they, they didn't understand either what, what I was going through. They didn't understand, like, hey, mom, you know, like, I'm, I'm being bullied. And back Back then, being bullied wasn't really open, right? Like, you didn't hear it often. Like, so how was I even supposed to tell my mom about that? Um, and, and then I went to high school, and um, I made a couple of friends there because I was going through to therapy, and they, they would kind of encourage me to, to, be, to make friends. So I made a couple of friends, but I still felt very lonely, very uh, depressed, um, still very not self-belonging. But then in 10th grade, I met a boy. <laughs> I met my first boyfriend. He was actually two years older than me. Um, you know, he was a football player at a different school. He didn't go to my school. Um, but he just kind of was, you know, like, hey, he's a football player, you know, every girl wants a football player, um, <laughs> you know, and I'm here short, you know, popular, Ooh, you know, like, I feel like I had a sense of belonging now, right? And everything was beautiful at first, everything felt just right. But then the, hey, babe, do you love me card came. And obviously, at that point, because I, you know, I grew up with my, my with a very somewhat Catholic family, you know, it's like you have to wait to marriage and that's it. Um, otherwise, you, you are disowned. 
but I was really loving this guy at that time. So then I engaged, you know, and sexually active, active with this person. But because of that, I felt like, okay, you know, like this is the way to show love. This is the way to, to feel belong, right? So that happened. I went, I dated this guy for like a year, um, almost a year and a half. And, and then he started also being very machista. He started, um, you know, telling me like things that he just didn't like or he wanted me to do certain things. And I eventually left, but during that time as I was dating this guy, my, my dad actually um, got really, really sick. Um, and in the midst of it, my, my family was trying to find hope, right? And when we find, try to find hope, who do we seek, right? If we're very, um, if we if we have a faith and and our center is God, we seek God, right? Um, especially if if we come from a Catholic family, our beliefs is praying to God and with praying with hope. Um, and the first thing that my family did was look for other resources like La Brujeria. Right. Um, so, to um, to this some call hermanito, a brother um, who came into our lives, and he talked about God, and um, he would tell us to to do certain things like, hey, turn this candle and do this prayer, right? So, hey, he's talking about God and he's telling us to turn candles, right? That's what we do in our Catholic church. But he would also read cards. Oh, but that's okay, right? Like, he's talking to us about God. Um, so, and my dad got better. My dad, uh, think, you know, he, he was, um, like I mentioned, he was really sick but he got really, really good after that. Um, so because my dad got really good after that, his health came back, um, we started still seeing this guy on a regular basis. He would be helping us, right, reading our cards, telling us what was about to happen, and we were good, preventing it by turning on candles and doing these prayers. And then he told my, my parents that I had a gift. I had a gift to... Um, to read these cards, that uh, that was called for something greater, that I was called to help people, help young girls out there um, to be saved. So my mom believed it. I started attending some classes that he called, but it was just me and him. Um, he knew a lot of what was going on. Obviously, my parents knew that I had a boyfriend but they didn't know uh, the other stuff that I was doing with my boyfriend, but this guy, obviously he did, right? He read the cards, he, he would tell me like, this is what's gonna happen, this guy is cheating on you, et cetera, I wouldn't believe it. But through the midst of me trying to go to my classes, I was actually sexually assaulted by this guy. Um, never told my parents, because I mean, now my mom knows, but I never told my mom at that time, I would just go with it because I was afraid that he would speak to my parents, that he would tell my parents what I was doing. He never threatened me, but that was my, my thought, right? Like, if I say something, he's gonna say something to my mom, and if my mom finds out, she's gonna disown me, right? She's, she, I was brought up into this, idea that, hey, I committed a huge sin and now I'm going to hell. Like, you know, I, I just can't, like she can't find out about this. Um, so I never told my mom. And when I when she found out, instead of her being so loving and, you know, and asking me, she literally told me, hey, um, you never told me because you liked it, huh? 
And I was like, what? <laughs> How can I like it, right? So it was always like my, it was my fault. It was my fault that that happened. And it was because I liked it. Eventually, she, she has already um, asked for, for forgiveness. And I forgive my mom because I'm sure it was really hard for her to find out, right? As um, a mom, I'm sure you can imagine that you would not want your, your precious little girl. I am the only girl, by the way. Um, I have two brothers, an older and a little one, um, to go through that. And so not only one was I bully growing up, now, um, but then I'm not only, you know, cutting myself and sexually assaulted, but I was here with this idea that in order for me to feel love, I had to give myself up, right? So that kind of just became a repetitive cycle. Um, after I broke up with my with that first boyfriend, um, I took only a couple of months, and then I started dating again. Um, and same thing, similar cycle, right? Where it just became at first it was beautiful, and then it became toxic. Um, with this guy, I lasted three years through my whole college years, um, pretty much. And then um, I realized, hey, this is not what I want. I I I want a, something better for me, right? Um, I want a godly boyfriend. And then I broke up with this guy. Same thing. I only lasted a couple months, and then I started dating this guy. But this guy... He was the first guy that talked to me about God in our dates. You know, he was actually from a different um, religion. He was Christian, um, and I'm obviously, you know, Catholic Christian. But that was okay. Like, I'm like, it's okay. Um, he's talking to me about God. You know, we went to tacos on our first date, and he talked to me about God. We spent almost two hours talking about God. So I'm like, God, this is the guy you have sent me for send me and I've been waiting for it the, my whole life. Um, my parents were never okay with him, not only because of his religion, but it was um, the way we met. My parents were just not okay. But because he talked to me about God, I told my parents, I don't care. I'm going to do ev everything possible to make it work. You know, so I was trying to prove my family, my friends, everyone that this person was the person that God sent me and that I was going to make it work, regardless of anything they said to me. Um, and it was beautiful at first. Same cycle, right? Same similar cycle. Um, but I honestly really loved this guy. That was the only difference, that I really loved this guy, so I thought I loved him. And... Um, we lasted th two years and a half before we decided that we wanted to have a baby. Um, I wasn't married, mind you. I, I've never been married, but I wanted a baby with this guy, right? Because I felt like this baby was going to connect us, that um, everything was just going to get better with my family situation, um, you know, that... I was going to be able to be free out of what, I, what you know, my, my, my household. Um, like I said, I was born into a traditional family, Catholic family. So even though we would go to Mass every Sunday, there was still no praying. My, um, my older brother, right, he suffered from depression, and there's just so much going on with him at home at home. So there's there's always all these things going on at home where I felt felt suffocated. But with having this baby, I was going to be able to be free. Um, and at the same time, when I decided that I wanted this baby, my grandfather passed away. Um, he passed away in July of 2008, 2018. So I'm like, what a better way, right? Like it's gonna bring joy, right? A lot oftentimes that's what we we hear. Baby brings joy, especially after 
a hard time in our families. So I was like, perfect, perfect opportunity for it. Um, I did get pregnant back in 2018. Um, so when I found out, I was really happy. He was really happy as well. Um, we, like I said, we really wanted this baby. So it was planned, like we actually planned the baby. Um, but since the beginning, everything kind of just felt weird, like different though. Like um, I didn't find out I was pregnant until like after three weeks of me, you know, after three weeks of not getting my cycle. Um, I had gone to the doctor uh, two two weeks prior for me finding out, right? That um, to to see, because obviously as women we kind of know like something is different from our bodies, right? But even then, our our the, the doctor's pregnant the pregnancy test came out negative, and so it was kind of like okay, you know, maybe it was just not meant to be. And then three week three weeks later, I found out that I am pregnant. So I was really happy. I was about to announce it to my parents, even though I was very fearful about what they were going to say. Um, that Monday, though, when I, when I, um, I was that Monday, so I found out on Sunday, but that Monday, when I was going to tell my parents, I actually started um, feeling weird and um, started to, to, to have some internal bleeding, right? Um, so I called the doctors because I was really scared and I'm like, hey, like I just found out I was pre I'm pregnant but now I'm bleeding, like is it normal? And they're, they're like, no, it's not normal, go to the emergency room. So I did go to the emergency room. But by this time I was in my last semester of, of, um, of college and I was um, almost getting ready for my finals. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to class. And after class, I'm going to go to the hospital and see what's going on. So I, that's what I did. I went to, I went to the, the hospital after my class. And obviously, they, they did everything. Like, you know, they asked me all this type of questions. Like, hey, um, uh, you want to do your last period? And... Um, why are you here? And they checked all, you know, every, like the usual, right? Like the whole usual questions. And I told them that I had just found out that I was pregnant, but I was bleeding and that's why I was there. So they checked and they're like, well, we know your pregnancy test came out positive, but um, we just have to do an ultrasound to make sure how far in you. You, you're in into your pregnancy. And I'm like, okay. So um, I did the ultrasound and it, there was nothing there. They're like, there's nothing. Um, are you sure you have your days right? Um, or maybe you just got confused. Or maybe there's just a false pregnancy that can happen. Um, you know, but we'll continue monitoring. Also your, your hormone levels are very low and um, so I was like, okay, you know, like, what am I, what do I have to do? Like, and they're like, okay, well, now you're just going to go home and you just have to follow up with your doctor as soon as possible. And they will tell you what to do afterwards. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I, you know, after that I left, I left home, but all this time I was by myself. Like my, the, the, the guy I was dating at the time he was in there. Um, you know, you would think like something like this, you want support, right? You want someone to be there. But I never thought about it. Like, I'm like, no, it's okay. Like, he's he's working and it's okay. Like, um, let me just do this by myself. But I was scared. I was like, I don't know what's going on. It's my first pregnancy. Like, I really want this baby. So then I follow up with my doctor and they're like, we're going to continue monitoring your hormone levels every other day so you have to go get uh, blood work done every other day and then um, in two weeks I'm gonna schedule an ultrasound um, if your hormone levels go up that's a good sign if they come down then that means you're gonna get a miscarriage and I was like okay so 
I started doing that. Uh, my, I started going every two days to the doctors. Um, I was, like I mentioned, I was really, really scared. So I told my, my dad and then I told my mom. I, I don't know why, but every time I do something wrong, I first tell my, my dad because he's more of like a peaceful, tries to understand instead of my mom. My mom is more of like the, why are you doing this, You're, et cetera, you know? So I told my mom, my dad first, and then I told my mom, but my mom dearly didn't talk to me. She said all this hurtful words to me. Uh, my dad was very supportive. But it's funny though, because at the, my mom was the one talking to my dad, right? Like, hey, like, tell her if she, if she, if she needs um, help going to the doctor or, um, you know, let, tell her how it went or et cetera, like that, right? She was trying to get the insight through my dad. And um, so I was doing all of this. Um, I was also going to school, like I mentioned, with my last semester. I was getting ready to finals. So I was going every other day to, to get my hormone levels. Eventually, those three weeks came up. And um, for this, this appointment, I, you know, both my, my partner at that time and, my, and myself, we both went. Um, and I remember going when my mom was pregnant, I was about like 12 years old when she had my little brother. I remember going to her ultrasounds. And I remember that um, my mom was able to hear my little brother's heartbeat. And the, the nurses, they would always be pointing at my mom, look, this is your baby. Like, you know, it's so beautiful. And this is, this is where it's at and all this joy and whatnot. So I was expecting that because at that point, my, my hormones levels were really high. Like they were really high. So, you know, I'm like, this is a good sign. Everything's gonna be good. So I go in and they're, and they're like um, completely silent. They don't say any word to me, um, but I do hear heartbeat. So I'm like, okay, this is good, you know, like there's a heartbeat, everything's fine. But then the nurse goes ahead and takes out the volume right away. And I'm like, okay, but this is not good, you know, and why is there so much silence? And then at the end, so it literally felt like 30 minutes that I was there, but I'm sure it wasn't 30 minutes. It was like maybe 10, 15 minutes max. They were there trying to find, find my baby. So when I came out, um, when I came out, they told me to wait in the lobby that the, the doctor was going to come out to talk to me. And um, he didn't come because he was at, at the hospital. So he gave me a call and he was like, you know, you are pregnant, but it's an atopic pregnancy. And I don't know for those who... For those of you, um, if you guys know what topic pregnancy is, but it's when the, the baby is um, outside of the womb. So it could be either located, um, oftentimes it's located in the fallopian tube um, or in the ovary. Um, those are the most common places for, for a baby to be located. Why does it happen? There's no explanation. It just happens. Um, so the doctors gave me two options. They're like, you can go to the you can go to the emergency room right now and get a pill that is gonna help you have a natural abortion, or you can just wait and have your body do it on its own. Um, and I was like, very like, no, there's no way I'm going to the hospital. I'm not gonna take no pill. I'm hopeful that this is a mistake. Um, I'm just gonna let my body do what it has to do and that's it. I'm not gonna do what you tell me to do. So I just laughed after that and I cried and I tried finding hope. I tried praying to God, but even then um, my faith wasn't strong. Um, I also see other resources, right? It had worked with my dad before, so it must have worked again, right? It's, it's going to work again. I'm, I'm going to have my baby. There's going to be a miracle happen through, through God or through other resources, but that's what I'm going to do. So I did. 
I saved other resources, finding, trying to find hope. I went to different clinics. Um, the hospital would be calling me every day. You have to come in. You're at risk. If you don't, if you don't uh, abort this baby, you are going to, to also die with this baby. And I was like, no, I cannot go right now. I'm at finals. I will make any excuse not to go, right? Because I was finding hope and that I had faith that, and why I'm saying this is because my faith wasn't really there. I was just saying I had faith and that I believed in God, but I wasn't really believing in God because if I was, I would truly, truly just be seeking God, not other, other resources. Um, so I was about to be nine weeks when I couldn't take the pain no more. I started to bleed even even more. Um, so I did did go to the hospital. I was rushed to the hospital. Um, my fallopian tube was actually about to burst. Um, I just went just on time before. So for those who have heard of an ectopic pregnancy, once the fallopian tube ruptures, it's literally internal bleeding nonstop. And that is the reason why your life is in danger. Um, because it's impossible for it to stop. Um, and they said if I would have gone on time, I could have you know, kept my fallopian tube, but they had to remove it. So now I only have one instead of having two. And the fallopian tube is what helps um, every month, like our, for us girls get our, I know I'm getting like kind of physical and, and you know, too much information for to you guys, guys, but it's important for you guys to know, right? <laughs> Um, it's what, you know, helps um, every month we as women release an egg and, you know, if the sperm and the egg meet, and that's when conception happened, right? But if they don't meet, then that's when our cycle begins. Um, and the tube is what helps the egg tra transfer the, the egg to the, to, the to the uterus, and that's how we give life as well. Um, so the chances are less when you only have one. To have a baby again um so i as you can imagine um I, I was rushed to the hospital and i had to get that surgery done i so my baby was removed from my from from my fallopian to where it would belong and i think this is the perfect opportunity to show you guys all my baby I named my baby Alex. I always felt that he was a guy, you know, a little boy, so I named him Alex. Um, Alex Antonio, Antonio because of my grandfather, in honor of him, he, like I said, he also passed away that year. Um, and then, so that's my baby. I... I was in shock, like I just couldn't believe, like I feel like everything happened so fast, like so, so fast when I lost my baby. And I had so much questions um, to why it happened, you know, like, hey God, like I was praying to you. Um, I was asking for a miracle. Um, my family needed this joy in our family. Right, because um, my dad, like I, you know, like I shared earlier today, um, we, I wasn't born here, so we all came to the United States. My dad had not seen my my grandfather, and he never got to say goodbye to my grandfather. Um, so he was in the also depression mode. Um, so we never, we were just in this, you know, feeling sad, feeling. Like we needed something, some joy in our life. So I was asking for, for questions. Um, I was just really mad. Like, why did this happen? But I wasn't mad with people. I was just mad with myself. You know, like, 
I'm a woman, I'm supposed to be able to give birth, you know, like why? And it was my first time even hearing about in top of pregnancy. I was mad at science. Why is it that there's such things as abortion, right? Like where people can kill their babies, there's machines out there that could kill babies, but there's no machines or anything that helps transport the baby from the fallopian tube to the uterus. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. It just, honestly, and it still doesn't make sense to me. Like, why? Um, but in the midst of all of that, I started really, really seeking God. Like, I was trying to find a purpose of the reason why it happened. You know, a reason that my dad was suffering depression and that he's suffering depression, a reason why my brother is an alcoholic, a reason why, you know, my, my parents were telling me to go to church, but they weren't practicing their faith. A, you know, a reason to everything that I was going through, a reason of why I was bullied when I was a kid, a reason of why I was sexually assaulted. Like, you know, like all these questions were just here with me. Like, hey, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why do I have to go? I'm like, good girl. Like, I've never done anything bad to anyone, you know? Like, I, why me? Why me? Like, I wanted my kid. Like. I'm not, I wasn't, you know, why other moms out there who are always partying, drinking, or have boarded, like, why, why, why me? So um, I, I also asked my partner at that time, hey, let's start going to church. Let's go together. Um, I started inviting him to come to the, uh, to the holy hour, but he wouldn't come with me. One, because he didn't understand that God is present there. And two, he will always question me, like, you know, why do you guys worship saints? Or why do you worship our blessed mother? Um, why are you always there, you know? Um, I invited him to come to a, a, uh, a CDJ. That's where I actually heard about Sower LA. Um, it was in 2019. Um, I invited him to come. I bought him a ticket. I also bought other friends a ticket, hoping that he would come. He made an excuse that weekend we fought, and, you know, I was still kind of begging him, please come, like, you know, let's get together. You know, I was always kind of begging him all the time to come to church. But because I also wanted our relationship to work, now not only did I want to prove people right and that our relationship was gonna work, but now we had a baby in heaven that connected us um, at that time. But I was just trying to say God, and he wasn't. Um, thank God, God introduced me to So LA. I was very hesitant to come to So LA, to be honest. I came once, but then I didn't come for a couple of weeks, and then I came again. But then, you know, those traumas of, insecurities of, you know, you're not worthy, people are going to make fun of you, um, you were bullied because of your height, some strangers over here who don't know me, let me just stay in my bubble where I feel belong, where I feel okay, right, which was my, my partner at that time where I feel loved right there, let me just stay there, but something was pulling me out of there, like something was just taking me out of there every week that I would come here, every week like something was just like i need this you know i need to come here um so i decided to to come every thursday um so i know so LA went into a, a, a winter break but once so LA came back i was here every thursday you know they announced um hey new discipleship classes i signed up did i want to not really but something told me to sign up, to sign up to so LA. So I came, I would do come every class, but God had plans for me already. And I think he continues to have plans for me. Um, like I said, I was premature, didn't talk, and also didn't walk right. But here I am talking, here I am walking, and here I am, right, as the coordinator so LA, and he has plans. 
and it was through COVID too. It was through through that time where everything was shut down. Our churches were, um, you know, closed. That I had my metanoia with God. That I had my answer of the of the reason why, right? And the reason why is because we all have purposes in life. Some, you know, our purposes are long. Some are short. And my baby's purpose was for me to get closer to God. God is a God of miracles. Amen? Amen. He could have made the miracle of, having, of me having my baby. And there's been, like, one story back in 1888 where it happened, and the topic pregnancy survived. Right, so if he did that back in the day, he could have done it with me, but he was like, no, I am not going to do that. Not because he was trying to punish me or because he doesn't love me or because he's not a God of miracles or because he's not, you know, merciful. But he knew that if he did that miracle to me, that I was going to go back to my own ways. That I was going to stay with this guy, that our relationship was very unhealthy, you know, and that I was only with this guy because I wanted to prove my family wrong, right, that we were going to work out, that despite our different um, religions, our beliefs, our culture beliefs, that we were going to work out, that I was going to compromise with this guy, and that everything was going to be fine, right, and that all my insecurities that everything that I lived in the past were gonna, just going to go away with this guy, that I was going to be set free with this guy. But God was like, no, daughter, you're going to be set free once you let go of that and once you kneel down at the feet, the, at the, feet of the cross. That's where you're going to be set free. You know, and there's still, like I said, um, I'm, I'm still living in grief because I really wanted my baby. And there's no day that I don't think about my baby. I think of the what ifs. What if my baby would have been here? And especially this month of May is really hard for me, not only because it's Mother's Day. And oftentimes, I think as moms who have lost children or like... Um, who have gone through a miscarriage and it was their first miscarriage and never had a baby again, um, they, they're not seen as moms, right? They're not seen as, hey, you had a kid, now it's in heaven, right? Because oftentimes we believe that to be a mom, the baby has to be born. And you have to be, you know, you had to, to have um, helped this kid throughout his whole childhood and, so we're not giving that validation to our mothers who have lost a kid. So it's really hard. And then two, it, this month was uh, my, my due date month. And um, so, you know, all this kind of mixed emotions come to, to, to my life. Um, so Sister Brenda and Sister Jesenia, can you go ahead and, and pass the, the candles, please? I want to invite you all, you know, Sister uh, Brenda and Sister Jusenia are going to be passing out candles. And like I mentioned, we are living in difficult times right now. You know, we f it feels like instead of moving forward, we're moving backwards. You know, there's a lot of people suffering of mental health from their trauma experiences. There's a lot of people grieving. And grieving is not just about a loss of someone. It could be a loss of a friend, a loss of, you know, a loss of being accepted to a school you wanted to, or just being accepted in general with your family. You're grieving that separation of not having that connection with, with a family member. The same way that God has a purpose for, for me, I know he has a purpose for all of you. And like Jesse said earlier today, you are here for a reason. 
We are all here for reasons, especially the ones who are not the here, person, but you are watching. You're watching this for a reason because God has something greater in store for you. But it's not about our past experiences. It's not what people did to us, but it's the what are we willing to do to be safe. So I invite you all to come to here to our at the cross and to our Blessed Mother, Mary, and come and offer this light, this candle, and leave that grief that you carry in your life. This month is our, our month of our Blessed Mother, and Sister Brenda reminded us last last week, right, that our Blessed Mother is always with us. That she's, it's always there with us, but it's us that we have to seek her. So whenever you're ready, I invite you to do the same. To seek not only our Blessed Mother, but also Jesus Christ. He already died for us at the cross, for us to be saved. And He has given us the choice whether we want to be saved or not. You all have to be willing to have an open heart to Him so He can work miracles in your life. Yes, you know, God is love. God is merciful. And only because we follow him, it doesn't mean we're not going to face troubles. We're always going to face troubles. But that's part of our journey. Right? To go through those troubles. And I want to read this scripture. It's from 1 Peter 5.10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So just reflect on those words. As you come here to the to the altar and offer this light that you have. Ask God to never turn off that light. Down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I surrender. 
drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold I hunger and thirst I hunger and With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. I surrender. I Surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I invite you in the name of Jesus Christ right now to take a stand right now. That if you haven't surrendered tonight, to surrender. I want to know. If you have pain in your heart, surrender that pain. If you have confusion in your heart and in your life whether it's your personal life whether it's your work whether it is wherever it is that you are if you have some type of confusion then you surrender it tonight if you are feeling weak surrender it tonight if you are holding on to anger bitterness in the name of Jesus Christ I invite you to come to the cross I and surrender, surrender it tonight. If you are a I prideful person, you if you still more. find yourself doing I bad things, doing bad ways, doing malicious things behind closed doors, I invite you to stand up and surrender. I surrender. I surrender. surrender what is getting in the way from you and God. Surrender those things that are getting in the way from you receiving the blessings. Surrender those things that are getting in the way for you to receive His mercy, His love, His peace, His strength. Surrender it all. Surrender it all. Fold. Fold yourself. Fold yourself. That is going to do you good. Humble yourself. Don't be ashamed of your weaknesses, that we all are weak here. Ain't no one perfect in this room. We all have weaknesses. And every day we must surrender ourselves. Every day we must know what things are we doing wrong. What things can we offer to the Lord? What things can we correct ourselves in? We... We must know how to come to God and be God. Here are the things that are no good to me. Here are the things that are making me weak. Here are the things that are not making me grow. Here are the things that are not letting me pray. Here are the things that are not letting me receive you in communion, Lord. I surrender them all, Lord. Surrender it all. To all the women that... Listen, to all the women that that have Jesus lost a child through abortion Lord, have come have to the cross 
because it would be a it would be it would be a shame that you spent all this life on earth grieving for your child and not make it to heaven to see him so I invite you to fold yourself surrender on the cross so that one day you get to rejoice with that son that daughter the mission is not only to receive happiness here and to feel free to make it to the kingdom the real life starts there we are going through a big test and you may you need to ask yourself ask yourself right now am I passing the test just like school am I passing the test am I gonna pass to the next grade am I gonna graduate am I gonna graduate to make it into heaven be real to yourself tonight Lord have your way Lord have your way are you studying just like a student he needs to study to get good grades to graduate to get a college degree to have a better future etc it's the same thing in the Catholics in the Christian life you need to study your Bible you need to good, do good deeds because a faith without good deeds is it's nothing are you gonna graduate if you need to recorrect yourself today is the night we say it all the time but it best believe that's the Holy Spirit that's the Holy Spirit that moves through us that is moving through us and you know sometimes we just need to hear it until we really get it sometimes the Holy Spirit is gonna tell you a million times just just your, just like your mother just like how your father told you not to do those bad things and then you grew up and you finally got it my mother was right I shouldn't have hung out with those friends my father was right I shouldn't have done that and if a humanly and a motherly mother can give you good teachings implement those good things imagine what our father on earth the creator the alpha the omega what can, what he can do if a human being can make you happy imagine how happy God can make you how truly he can really make you go back to that that happy place that you had with your friend that good little brunch that you had and just go back to that happy moment and you're like man I feel good today I'm having a good day imagine feeling like that 24 7 having God like that in your in your everyday life God doesn't have us here for just just to to do this he needs us he needs us every day the world is getting worse like sister said every day we need to even sacrifice even more because things are getting worse and this is why it's important to really practice our faith this is why we must take a stand together and say this is what God stands for this is his words these are his teachings we need to defend what God has given us or else the devil's just gonna come and snatch it the devil's not afraid to go to our schools to go to kindergarten you see it all over social media who what type of people he's sending to our schools to infest our kids to pollute their minds to pollute their hearts to pollute us look what social media is doing to us 
Look at what these teachings, look at what the world is trying to do right now. Support abortion. We don't stand for that. We rebuke it. So as a family, altar call. Brothers and sisters, I'm so thankful for Sister Daniela's testimony. I'm so thankful that God used Sister Daniela to speak to us tonight about how we are called for something great. How God has a plan and a purpose for our life. How God has called you here for a specific purpose tonight. So if you, if you feel like God has spoken to you tonight, if you really do believe that God has spoken directly to you, if you feel like God has brought you here to bring you out of that lifestyle that you've been living in, if God has brought you here to give you a breakthrough so that you, you can have a brand new metanoia, a brand new beginning, if you feel like God brought you here for a purpose and you will never be the same again and you need prayer tonight to to bring you to a new place in god just come on and step up right here lift up your hands and say i need prayer tonight this i'm i'm, I'm, not, I'm not leaving this place the same so come on you step up right here and just say i need prayer i need prayer i need prayer please pray for me amen Call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand.
My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit will lead you and must trust us with our borders. And we walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet, so that I wonder. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. The Spirit in me, where my trust is without borders, and we walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit leading me where my trust is without borders. And you walk upon the waters wherever you would call in me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. So I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. You are mine. You are mine.
Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Solo quiero Dios, nada más, nada más. Solo quiero Dios, solo quiero Dios, nada más, nada más. Solo quiero Dios, solo quiero Dios, nada más, nada más. Solo quiero Dios, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else. Solo quiero Dios, I just want you in my life, Lord. Nothing else, nothing else. Solo quiero Dios, solo quiero Dios. Anybody else in the crowd, please stand to the front. We're about to close up. I don't want you to go home saying, I should have gone up there. Just come. Just come and let God take care of the rest. Let God take care of the rest. Let God take care of, take care of whatever it is that you can't take care of. Let God be God. Let him be a God to you. That's why he is God. Who are not here for Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Pray hope, pray hope, pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Oh, no, no, no. Pray, hope, don't worry. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the mountains they surround you. 
the mountains they surround you so the lord 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 surround you heavenly host heavenly host he's given his holy angels he's given his holy angels to watch to god to guide you 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 pray hope pray hope pray hope don't worry Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Oh, no, no, no. Pray, hope, don't worry. Abide in me, abide in me, come find your breath, your life in me. Come find your breath, your life in me. Come rest within my heart and see, I feel strength, your everything. Come find your breath, your life in me. And come, God, abide in me. Abide in me. Abide in me. Come find your breath, your life in me. Find your breath, your life in me. Come rest within my heart and see. I feel your strength, your everything. Come find your breath, your life in me. Come, God, abide in me. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope. Pray hope. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Pray, hope, don't worry. Oh, no, no, no. Pray, hope, don't worry.
in control. I want more of you, God. 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 I want more. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Of you, Lord. I want more of your love. I want more. I want more. I want more of your love. I want it all. I want it all. Oh, your love, I want it all of you, God. I want more of your love. I want more. Voy a adorar, sé que algo sucederá. Voy a adorar, voy a adorar, voy a adorar, sé que algo sucederá, sucederá. Sucederá, sucederá, sé que algo sucederá, 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 sé que algo sucederá. Voy a clamar, voy a clamar, voy a clamar, sé que algo sucederá, 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 sucederá. Sé que algo sucederá, 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 it will be done, sucederá, I just know it will be done, it will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. I just know thy will be done. Voy a adorar, voy a adorar, voy a adorar. Sé que algo sucederá. Sucederá. Sucederá, sé que algo sucederá. Thy will be done. I will be done. I will be done. I just know thy will be done. Sucederá. 
sucederá, 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 I just know thy will be done. I hear the Lord saying that there is a divine purpose, a divine plan for each and every one of us tonight. And it's God desires for us to open up and receive his plan. His plan is bigger than our plan. His big plan is better than our plan. God wants to work miracles through you. God wants to it God wants to work miracles in your life and he wants you just to say yes. He wants to say yes to God's plan. He wants you to say yes and use he wants you to be used in a bigger way, in a greater way. There are destinies waiting to be fulfilled in your yes. God is going to do miracles. He's waiting for you to say yes tonight so that he can use you for the salvation of souls in your world. The salvation of souls is resting in your yes. In the name of Jesus, receive the yes to transform our world. Our world needs your yes. Miracles are happening through your yes. God is blowing your mind with your yes. He's going to go beyond your expectations. He's going beyond your imagination. He's going beyond your limitations. And he's going to exceed your greatest hopes and dreams. He's going to use you in ways you never thought he could. So we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray a blessing on your yes tonight. I pray a blessing on your coming and your going, and I pray a blessing on your household. I pray a blessing on your decision to say yes tonight. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ever hope for and imagine through the power that's here, we say yes. We ask you, Lord, to send us forth from this place with a new, fresh yes. Stepping into a new beginning, stepping into a new life in Christ, stepping into miraculous life. Knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Pray a blessing on your health. Pray a blessing on your mental health. I, I pray a blessing on your healing, complete healing in the name of Jesus. Complete healing tonight in the name of Jesus. We rise to a new day. We rise to a new life. We rise in the authority of the name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. Uh, I don't know, you're kind of tired. I know it's late. Can you give me a little a louder amen, please? Amen. 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 amen.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen.